there is a place when you leave the growing confines of Jackson Hole, where the sagey hills are endless and the open plains make you feel small yet free. The beasts of lore still yet roam, but there is a bird way less known. start with this one i mean there's a lot of moving parts um i've been following robbie on his platform blood origins for many years uh we keep in contact and always try to help each other out uh, so i saw that he was doing a campaign to raise money for a uh, nonprofit called wyoming hunters for the hungry and that the uh, two teams that raised the most amount of money would win a sage grouse hunt uh donated by wyoming wildlife federation uh, so I was pretty intrigued because I have seen sage grouse when I'm out in Wyoming hunting antelope and mule deer, but I've never thought about specifically targeting them. Uh, so I put together a team and got some huge help from team captains, uh, Chris at High Range Hunting, uh, Glenn at Hunt Domain, and uh, Bird Dog Busby, and uh, we took second. So we won a sage grouse hunt and we decided to donate that back to veterans. Um, so let's meet our veterans and then let's hear a little bit about the birds themselves from our guide, Sam. I am Nate Savecki from Rome, Wisconsin. I served in the Marine Corps from 2007 until 2011. My name is Chris Holworth. I live in Powell, Wyoming. Uh, I served in the Army. Uh, I served from 1985 to 1993. My name is Daniel Waugh. I am from Emmett, Idaho, just outside of Boise. I am a Air Force veteran, a um, little different though. I actually served with the Army my career. I uh, enlisted when I was 17 in 1998 and was ultimately medically retired in November of 2015 after getting blown up in an IED in Iraq on my fourth deployment in 2006. So I have been sage grouse hunting before. Uh, it's been a number of years, probably in the two, 2007 or 8 area, uh, but when this opportunity came up, uh, you know, how could I pass it up? So I grew up hunting in Idaho um, from an early age. Uh, I actually had the privilege of hunting sage grouse um, around the Salmon, Idaho area and in the Owyhees, um, just a desert mountain range south of Boise. Probably the last time I hunted them was probably right around 1994 um, with my father antelope hunting. I've known, I've kept track of them, I always loved hunting them, but I've kept track and seen the numbers have been dwindling. Um, I have discussions with my, my kids who are hunting and we're constantly talking about conservation and animal numbers and how hunting supports conservation. And so I actually came on this hunt kind of as a last minute, I saw it posted that someone had backed out and I sent a message on social media and said, hey, I could come. I have hunted them in the past. So if there's someone that has never hunted them, give them the opportunity. And they said, nope, come on out. And I jumped at the opportunity. Never been sage grouse hunting before. I've known Ryan for a few years now. We've done some turkey hunting back in Wisconsin. Um, he called me for this opportunity and I just jumped on it. My name is Sam Stein. I'm a, I'm a conservation ambassador for Wyoming Wildlife Federation. I, uh, I also guide on the side part-time. Um, and when Wyoming Wildlife Federation reached out to me and told me that they were doing a project and one of, they wanted one of the prizes to be a sage grouse hunt, um, I volunteered to do it. And then I met Ryan through that. And then I met all these great guys uh, through this actual trip. About. 83% of Wyoming is sagebrush, 
And that's where uh, sage, sage grass actually live and thrive in. They eat it, they, they nest in it, they hide in it. That's their whole consistency is in sagebrush. So Wyoming has this, has this unique opportunity where um, because there's so much sagebrush and so much public land out here, the, the sage grass hunting is actually, it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the best place in the U.S. to do it. Um, the, the sad thing about sage grass though is the numbers are, are kind of going down um, and that's just because of human development and, and uh, human interference, not specifically hunting, but land development and fencing and all this stuff kind of has a pretty big, uh, unfortunately, negative impact on sage grouse because what sage grouse need are large, untouched tracts of land, and that's what they thrive in. Uh, so every time there's a fence that comes up or there's an oil rig, and, and Wyoming Wildlife their mission is to kind of mitigate these challenges and to work together with NGOs, other corporations, oil and gas themselves, and to kind of figure out what's the best way to keep sage grouse on the landscape. And that's kind of where I come in and, and I help do that. And that the, the connection for me is around hunting sage grouse because although you are hunting sage grouse, it accounts for less than 1% of actual you know, predation numbers. It gives you this connection with the bird that you wouldn't otherwise have because you're in this high desert area. You'd never be out there. There's, you think there's nothing out there. And then out of the sagebrush comes 30 giant birds. And all of a sudden you realize that there's, there's so much more when you, spend, when you spend time and energy into this conservation project. You realize there's so much more out there that you would have missed if you didn't have this opportunity. Before we hit the sage and go chase these birds, I just want to say thank you to everyone who made this event happen. Um, even the day before we hunted, uh, Wyoming Angling Company donated their time and uh, drift boats and took us fly fishing on the Snake River just south of Jackson Hole. Absolutely amazing. Um, to Sam and his gun dog Bandit uh, for their time and expertise and for Wyoming Wildlife Federation just putting this whole thing together. Uh, but most of all, Thank you to the people who donated to this campaign and continue to support organizations like High Point Adventures and all these events we do for vets, kids, and uh, just your generosity and your financial support is unbelievable. We couldn't do this without you. It dries up super fast. When it dries up, it turns into those pebbles. You turn that like black, tarry stuff. You're a poo expert. Resident, Resident poo expert. Hit that. That rock, it's leverite. Cause you find it and you leave it right leverite. there. <laughs> hey yo! I never really knew what sage grouse hunting was. Um, a lot of walking, pretty much all day walking. We didn't take many breaks. It's great to watch the dog work out in the field. That was amazing. 
it was great. <laughs> uh, lots of birds. Um, the only problem was my my knees were the problem. <laughs> so but it, it was a good time, uh, and the scenery is spectacular. I mean, you couldn't have been in a nicer place. It, it was great. Being on this veteran hunt today it was uh, pretty amazing. Three vets, uh, three different branches all came together. And by the end of the day, we were like we've known each other for a while and we had just met. But it was the camaraderie that we've had throughout our military service is what brought us together on this hunt to become good friends and to be able to enjoy the day, share stories and uh, have some good laughs and capitalize on some beautiful birds. I love this opportunity. Uh, I work fire EMS. I love giving back to my community, especially kind of through something direct like that. But also, um, my brother was a, is a combat vet, and I'm very close with him, and it's, it's interesting because I've seen his struggle when he got home to, you know, kind of finding himself. And one of the ways that he's done that is through public land and through kind of like the outdoors. Um, so I just, I feel so passionate about being able to give back and provide that opportunity. Not that any of these guys need it, because they all know what they're doing. They're accomplished outdoorsmen. Um, but it's cool to kind of like be on the outside of that group and, and be on the inside of that group too because you can really see how they connect over these shared experiences and it's cool to it's cool to kind of like I would say like peek under the rug um, and get to have this kind of like intimate connection with these guys and they're all super nice dudes and they all you know have like really sacrificed a lot for our country and it's nice to be able to do something that directly you know positively impacts them and it's more than just like oh thank you for your service. You know, being on a veteran's hunt like this, when I joined the service, uh, my recruiting officer's wife came up and gave me a big hug and said, well, welcome to the family. She said, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you always have family around. And this is, this is it. Uh, I mean, I'm 68 years old and most of the guys here are in their 30s, but we still have all kinds of stories in common common places, common occurrences, and they're just, it brings back so many memories uh, of your service life and just a different time in your life. And so getting to share stories, jokes, um, things we experienced really doesn't matter. You know, I'm sure if we could go back in time, we could probably relate with Roman soldiers. It's a brotherhood that spans the test of time. We share things and have abilities to connect no matter who you are, where you're from, color of your skin, religion, doesn't matter. We're all brothers and sisters. So it's really cool to get out and share these experiences together, laugh, give each other a hard time if someone misses a shot and just hang out, you know. We have amazing scenery behind us, and so waking up, sharing a cup of coffee, hiking through the sagebrush, up some hills, that's what it's about. Um, getting back out, shoulder to shoulder, and sharing them all.